mi yekur o bel o kısk sen. Artur. Esa hacan ela galis. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, good, good evening. Afternoon. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Rubina, what's our timetable? Shall we begin or um, not? Yes, not I guess yes. Yes. And I'm I guess, waiting for more people, right? Armine, do um, we wait more people? We and we have two uh, people that haven't joined yet, but uh, maybe we can... Borussen. Okay, admitting Vartui. Oh, we can wait, no problem. And Armenian English in Chenkosum Jovov. Maybe English, I don't know. Let's start in English and then if there are questions in Armenian, then we will continue to Armenian. And there's all the Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now we may start, I guess. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, thank you, Rubina, uh, Armine, I guess uh, Arthur. We represent the sort of management and the administration here in the industrial engineering program. I'm Aram Hajan, I'm the dean. Arthur Khalatin is your program chair, our program chair. Rubina and Armina are two of our key staff people. And so we collectively, I don't know, uh, we're the they and you're the you, uh, if you want to do it that way. So uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm going to skip over uh, probably a, a proper appreciation and um, acknowledgement of the difficult situation that many of us are in personally and I think all of us collectively um, between the coronavirus, the war, and the subsequent uh, turmoil uh, that all of it brings together. I, I, I want you to know that we're not insensitive to any of that, uh, but for the purposes of this call, maybe we'll go straight to uh, our task at hand. Um, and so maybe I'll leave the introduction that much. Uh, I think this is a great chance for you to hear about our program. Uh, we are trying to, as difficult as it is, look ahead and look long term. Uh, I guess many of you are as well. Uh, and so with that in mind, I'll say that uh, I guess we'll go around and introduce ourselves a little bit. Uh, I mean you. Uh, so that we have a better sense of um, how we can help you, what kind of questions we can answer, uh, and kind of uh, help advise you or steer you in the direction most valuable for you. And so um, I'll just say that, you know, we're online right now uh, here at AUA. Hopefully that by the time, uh, what, next year comes around in the summertime or spring or in the fall, uh, we hope to be back in the building and back to our um, more standard modality of instruction. But we've become, I think, uh, quite agile, quite flexible, quite uh, innovative in our own approaches, trying to deal with uh, the virus over the last year. In any case, I'll, I'll let you drive the discussion with your questions. I just want to welcome all of you. Uh, here, and I hope we can 
uh, answer whatever questions you may have and provide any guidance that you expect. So welcome, nice to see you, nice to meet you. Some of you I think I may have met before, many of you I have not, so happy to meet you. Maybe start. I have a small engineering problem in this room. Uh, the light goes off because the sensor doesn't see me. It's an electrical engineering, not industrial engineering problem. I see. It's I a the solution, but it seems like your computer or something in front of you is a bright shining light that gives a solution. <laughs> yes, it does. So I, I can may... happily say that, that we see yeah. you. And I'm so starting to see some others too. There's Ellen now who also seems to have a camera. That's nice. It's more than just names and photographs. I'm seeing moving people. So, yes. so yeah, uh, I'm introduced. I'm Arthur Halatian. I'm uh, the chair, program chair for the Industrial Engineering and Systems Management uh, program. I just became program chair one year ago. Or, yeah, more so, one year. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm teaching also here um, uh, subjects related to design of information uh, systems. And I'm also serving as industry liaison for our college. Uh, and the industry liaison is a person who goes to industry and talks about their problems and then think together what sort of interesting projects and experiences we can get for our uh, students. Uh, and not only the industrial engineering, but the entire college. Um, so that's that's basically me, and I will do a small introduction later for the program, and we'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions. For me now, or yeah. So, uh, we asked we asked people to introduce themselves. Ellen, uh, could you please start introducing yourself? Hi, um, as you say, my name is Ellen. Uh, I have I'm, have an undergraduate degree at AUA. I was one of the first undergraduates, actually, and I have uh, graduated from the business administration department and with the economic spe specialization. Uh, currently, I want to be more involved in the data analysis and business intelligence scope. And um, my main my main question is I'm trying to understand whether the CIS program is more is uh, more fit to me than this program the industrial engineering program uh, because as I saw the computer science program needed more mathematical and computer science background uh, which I don't have actually but now uh, I have had the several trainings in data analysis and data science so I just wanted to see whether this program is more uh, fit to me to my needs uh, and my interest in data analysis and BI actually. Okay. Yeah. Albert? Albert, could you introduce yourself? Hi Albert. First, um... Yes, my name is Albert. Um, I'm a student of uh, physics and mathematics specialized school at Tashishanyan, and I'm going to apply for an AUA engineering uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, and I'm here to know about to um, get answers for uh, some questions uh, about the engineering. Okay, good. Um, Did I hear thank you. correctly that he was applying for an undergraduate degree or graduate degree? Undergraduate, Arina. Bacala? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Albert, we are here to discuss master's program in industrial engineering, but uh, still you can stay and maybe you will find this interesting and later we will answer your questions as well. Uh, Nelly, could you introduce yourself? Nelly? No? Uh, Ar Arpine? Yes, uh, hello, again. Uh, hello again. My name is Arpine. I study it at AUA right now. I'm a fourth year student at the uh, business department. And I just wanted to know more about the available master programs in AUA. 
I'm also interested in um, data science or and analytics. So uh, I just want to see what options I have uh, if I want to continue my studies in any way. Okay, thank you, Ani. Uh, yes, hi. Um, hi. I'm Ani. Uh, I I graduated from the National Polytechnical University from the Applied Mathematics and Informatics Faculty in 2019. I haven't applied to any master's program because I um, I was thinking about. Uh, working and um, I'm working as a software testing engineer for almost two and a half years. Uh, I was interested about AUA master's program so I want to know what options I have um, and decide if I want to continue my education in master's degree. So that's it. Thank you. Nelly, do you hear me? No, Nelly. Nelly wrote, a, Nelly wrote in the chat that her microphone is not working. Okay, okay, Nelly. Uh, just write in the chat, please, uh, about your background. Vanessa? Could you? Uh, yes, good everyone. Uh, I hope that the sounds uh, couldn't disturb us. I'm not uh, in home at home. Um, I'm Vanessa Boyan, a current, uh, I'm current student at ASUE, uh, Accounting and Auditing Faculty. Uh, I'm quite uh, interested in computer science program master's degree. And uh, the main reason I'm here, I want to know uh, whether I'm suitable, uh, whether my uh, degree uh, of accounting is suitable for computer science, uh, science master's program. Uh, currently uh, currently uh, uh, trying to learn Python, the programming language, and I want to uh, master some field in data analytics. Thank you. Thank you, I Vanessa. Hope, uh, Thank you. Marine? Marine, could you introduce yourself? Marina is part of our team. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, Arthur, I guess we can start introducing our program. Uh, and yes. Okay. So, so main questions. Um, well, well, uh, two at least. We have two questions about for deciding between uh, CIS and IESM. Uh, programs and um, um, yes, they hope they both have uh, data science, data analytics uh, component. Um, but let me just give you a very brief introduction. I don't think it will take more than um, uh, five, seven minutes, and then uh, we'll try to uh, answer more questions. Yeah. There's Mari who entered. You have two people, Rubina, in, in the waiting room. Yeah, okay. Uh, they are in now. Yeah, thank you, Amina. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. yes. Um, uh, Right, so it's industrial engineering and systems uh, management um, a program with College of Science and Engineering. Actually, this is one of the master degree programs that we have. The other is uh, computer and information science uh, program. Um, when when we talk to a lot of our um, alumni and ask them what it what actually the um, ISM can uh, give and what sort of skills that you think that you now using a lot and that are very much valued by your employers. Um, as uh, a lot of them uh, mention uh, that they have kind of a, a new innovative way of thinking as an engineer is finding new innovative uh, solutions to uh, problems. Um, and uh, not only in, in production systems, but also in services and in information technologies, because 
um, the main things that are very much of concern for the industrial engineers are, are all the aspects of productivity and optimization. How the, all the bits or how all the parts of the business, uh, the technology, resources, human um, resources, the human talent, how everything is combined to create the most um, uh, 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 results, uh, the best result out of uh, with, with the smallest price and with the smallest cost. And, um, and of course, obviously, in these days, um, a lot of these uh, decisions and analysis are made uh, based on, uh, on data. Uh, we have data stored in many, many places. Um, there is data, you can see how much data is generated in supermarkets, how much data is generated in, in various types of machines, in production lines. Um, and, uh, and obviously a lot of uh, optimization is, is calculated with, uh, with the data uh, based on data-driven analysis. Um, and of course, based on that and those types of analysis, we, what we are also learning is how we then increase efficiency and what new solutions we can uh, suggest. And um, there are many, many decisions that are coming um, to, uh, to the tables of managers. And uh, a lot of time people really need to have um, uh, this knowledge as a manager, um, how everything is functioning. And uh, a lot of decisions are made under uncertainty. So there's um, many of our graduates um, also talk about how they are now much able, equipped to calculate the risk and manage the risk. Um, one of the great biggest aspects of uh, any production or service is also quality management and assurance and how the information technologies are also um, used uh, to improve uh, productivity. Well, um, if, if we look at the courses, uh, the, you will see that the, many of them are very much related to optimization. Um, but uh, there are also uh, courses that are very much related to the mathematical methods uh, like probability uh, theory and st engineering statistics um, and, uh, and also how data is designed and stored so that you can operate with the data much more um, efficiently. Um, one of the uh, uh, core uh, courses that we have is operations research and we have a bridge course which is operations research one and the main operations research course uh, which uh, which is uh, which gives you all that knowledge and skills uh, to uh, deal with uh, problematic situations in in, in large uh, production systems we also obviously the production systems analysis and quality assurance and management um, and so of course we also have the electives and uh, a lot of time you you choose electives based on what concentration you concentration you want to follow and we have three main concentrations uh, one is the logistics and everything that is related to movement of goods and services and resources so that everything is on time and in the most efficient manner to produce something um, and uh, the other concentration is um, uh, data analytics um, and data analytics is dealing with um, a lot of these things so in the same logistical problems you have a lot of data based on which you come up with new solutions and the other is sustainable operations and resource management you know the resource management with the climate change all this conversation has been very very high uh, on many many uh, big companies uh, agenda on government's agenda uh, and that's uh, when we're talking about here everything the energy and uh, waste and water all sorts of resources um, that, uh, that can be managed uh, uh, in much more efficient way. And, we're also, and, and we also have, some of our students have done also projects which are purely data science projects, but they are very much related to resource management. For example, for a huge uh, greenhouse uh, companies. Um, but these are the three concentrations and you choose electives based on which concentration you want uh, to follow. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, um, well, career opportunities, uh, we have a huge database of all uh, alumni and we try to bring our alumni to our um, 
to some as a guest lectures or to network with our students but you will see generally we have just taken them the most frequently what sort of positions they are taking it's chief operations officer senior researcher technology manager data analyst product design engineer or for production planning expert quality assurance lead well and they have in and if you look at the hierarchy in the, in the companies we have all we have a chief executive managers officers or a bank manager chief engineers or uh, or programmers but who are doing not just coding but doing understanding the whole industry and ecosystem and making operations research and uh, and programming um, and of course, IT project manager, and, uh, and many of them are also are founders of companies. And on uh, on the blue place, in the blue uh, uh, side, you see all, all sorts of industries where our alumni are currently working. And this is not obviously the exhaustive uh, list. Um, well, I already talked about uh, concentrations, so um, we, we can skip that. Um, and just a uh, couple of uh, couple of uh, examples what sort of research they are doing before graduation as part of their uh, capstone thesis or project uh, for example they they are calculating using maps and different other data collected from various places how they optimize the routes and then this one was for Echmiadzin city they all some of our students did projects with the GG just to make predictions how uh, how, where the cars should go so that they are closest to their client. Um, there, there are also some data analytics related to customer preferences for mortgage loans with banks. Um, there are also some um, analysis of uh, chemical parameters of uh, wines. This is just to show you how diverse this, uh, uh, how diverse the industries can be, and with obviously with every industry there is optimization issues there are some things that are related to technology how you measure quality how you assure the quality um, and these are uh, only kind of uh, some of the some of the examples banking telecom IT industry um, etc um, that's that's possibly it now um, with a question that's related to I mean where do you go? Obviously, I'm a program chair of IESM, and I will say, come to us uh, for the data analytics. That I think that was Ellen's and who else was asking uh, the question. But um, uh, the the main uh, possibly maybe the main difference or the main uh, it, it really matters what what is your background. And um, if you want to become a pure data science, I've also done some research and done some project in, in data science. And we are currently, we currently also have an artificial intelligence lab with uh, Pixart, um, with where students are going through some uh, training and then, uh, and, and some of our ISM students went also through those trainings and uh, now they do research project with the company. Uh, but, um, the biggest difference is that with IESM you are learning both how how you look up at the look look at the business from the ground how do you understand all the mechanics what's working with what and where you find inefficiencies where you find uh, problems that can be solved with uh, with data analytics or other other tools um, and uh, and then you have a lot of kind of domain knowledge for a particular industry or know how to get that domain knowledge. And then you, you use your data analytics capacity for very particular types of uh, problems. With data science is, um, well, data science, people usually will have background in uh, computer science because if you want to be uh, high-end professional, and I assume everyone wants to be top professional in their field, you really need to go through some training in math, and this is not only about coding, but it's also um, advanced statistics, probability, uh, you know machine learning has uh, 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 tons of 
uh, mathematics uh, attached to it. So you really need to decide for yourself whether you want to, to go and observe and um, make some research and find a problem which is a kind of industrial type of problem, um, efficiency optimization type of problem, and then use all the data and uh, analyze that data to come up with a solution. Um, and the pure data is that when you give this huge Google type Amazon data or other data, but still again, even with that, um, a lot of most professionals kind of add to their value when they also know ways how they research particular industry. How do they research e-commerce? How do they research telecom? What are the, what is the, value chain uh, in that uh, particular uh, industry, how the value is created and what type of technology, what type of positions, what type of rules and policies, how everything is contributing to entire value creation. That will be my, my, my answer, but um, well, because you are making this kind of, uh, making me to make, to put uh, this, uh, balance uh, obviously I would recommend uh, especially with with business background well you need to think about uh, ah, yes I'm definitely uh, I have a question I see that there are some preparatory courses uh, in the website that we have to take before applying uh, what's the schedule for these courses uh, I mean do we take it before the semester starts and are these courses free or uh, they're not and how it's the managed I would like to know that yeah these courses are um, are free the schedule for for example probability and statistics uh, this is generally taught during summer uh, semester and uh, operations research is um, is kind of um, you you um, uh, you studied during the first semester of your first year uh, just to prepare for the operations research too. Uh, An intro to programming, I think it is, um, it can be both autumn or uh, spring and there are, there might be also other courses that are kind of replacements for intro. Sorry, Arthur, just a small addition. The courses are free for those to, who are admitted because uh, we add them as a, uh, to the course list uh, that you register for. So uh, you are registering for three to five courses, uh, full, which is full time, and you are paying only for three courses. And the fourth or fifth course is registered this course. You cannot come and take just this course for free. Yeah, this I mean. Qualification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, regarding the courses, uh, for those who are now uh, uh, the students for, from AUA, from uh, different programs of AUA, you may take those courses as, um, as, as uh, for example, as uh, part of your genetic studies. Uh, for example, you can take discrete mathematics uh, or or any uh, or probability, counting it as uh, quantitative uh, genet course, or you can take it as free elective as a part of free, your free elective requirements, and then you will get credits for your study, current study, and that will be also counted as a prerequisite course. So you will not be uh, needed to take it second time. Yeah, the prerequisite courses don't give any credits, so uh, they don't they don't give any credits. You just assume you already need to know that, but because of uh, some differences with the rest of the universities we have, and also some with some programs that we have at AUA, um, you just uh, you need those courses to be successful in your other courses. Any other questions? And uh, regarding the admission exams, uh, I see that we have to take a GRE exam. Uh, if I have taken a calculus course uh, throughout my studies, is it necessary to take the GRE test as well? And I don't know, do, do they have the test now during this pandemic or it stopped? 
Ellen, can you remind me where you graduated from? Uh, I graduated from AUA, the Business Administration Department. Okay. Um, can I CSC get co-host status, please, to share my screen? Sure. Um, I'm going to, ah. to, to walk you through this. Um, all right, here we go. Oh, it's not letting me share screen. Give me one quick second. Um, this information is all outlined on our website. Um, so let me know once you guys see my screen. Yeah. We okay. So if you look here, the graduate standardized tests, <laughs> you're right, GRE, GMAT is actually one of the programs that, um, I, yes, I'm sorry, is a program that does require the GRE, GMAT, but we do have something called the GRE, GMAT test waiver, which you can see right over here, okay? So as a BAB student, if you, if you received a, uh, a B or higher in two of the following three courses, Calc 1 or single variable calculus or business math, applied stats or statistics, intro to econometrics or machine learning. Then essentially you're uh, sending an email to grad at AUA.am with a copy of your transcript with the subject line GRA GMAT waiver request. And then we will go ahead and process it so that, you know, as long as you meet that criteria, you would be waived of that exam. Now, let's say for whatever reason, math was not your strong suit, you didn't do well in those courses, you don't get the waiver. Um, there are additional options. So again, sorry, let me quickly share my screen again. We have something called the internal assessment for fall 2021. So if um, for whatever reason you can't take the GRE or GMAT, you fill out a document, this form right here that details your math and statistical concepts that you studied um, in your previous education. And then you might be asked about those in more detail during an interview if you're invited to one. Um, if, are you applying for the spring semester or for the fall semester? Uh, for, for the fall semester. So it says here that fall 2021 applicants should note that, um, you know, if you're applying to ISM, then uh, applicants who ultimately are able to take the GRE or the GMAT will be given preference. Um, and then the final, you know, you asked, well, are these exams offered? Uh, GRE has a home test that you can take from the comfort of your own home. So you can just register to take um, that home test. You don't have to go out and, and you know, put yourself at risk of COVID. Um, and you know, AUA does accept that home test. And we're only looking at the quantitative section of, the, of that GRE test. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, by the way, Ellen, uh, you have taken Calculus 1, right? Or Business Math? No, I have taken Calculus 1 and I also taken Applied Statistics. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, now we are looking for your questions. Please be active. I can ask a question. Sure. If it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, are there any labs uh, for engineering um, where we can do uh, different research? Um, studies. Yeah, we actually have um, a rapid prototyping lab, which is in our basement a part of our entrepreneurship and product innovation center and um, you actually have seen probably we have CAD CAM uh, courses that are taught by uh, Saki Zaytunia and they are doing uh, many of their projects um, in, in that lab if this is the type of this is a kind of fabrication lab if you like. Albert, um, I, I think uh, you would need to um, come to uh, enge engineering in uh, business uh, in engineering sciences. Oh, sorry, bachelor in engineering sciences, uh, open house or question answer session because you are uh, graduating from uh, uh, high school and you are looking for bachelor. And yes, they have some labs, they have electrical uh, engineering lab so uh, you will be able to do some research and you will be able to to work on um, 
mechatronics, on uh, automatic controls, etc. So all those those courses are included in the program of uh, bachelor in uh, engineering sciences, and that that will be more appropriate for your interest, I guess. So please look uh, where when we will have the, the similar event for uh, for the engineering sciences uh, and attend that. December 5th, we're having an open house on Zoom. So uh, please get back on Facebook and, and check out for that event. Yeah, but the, but the, but the computer-aided design is also taught for engineering sciences as well, the, the lab that I mentioned. Okay, thank you. Sorry for disrupting your station. So, it's okay. Other questions? Uh, may I ask? Um, sure, Vanessa. Um, uh, as I said, uh, I'm currently learning an accounting faculty and uh, I'm interested about the admission and uh, what requirements uh, besides the GRE, GMAS and uh, TOEFL uh, examinations I must uh, uh, admit, uh, uh, bring for admissions. Uh, uh, I learned that uh, the computer science master program requires not only uh, this examination, but uh, the bachelor degree in uh, statics, uh, statistics or uh, applied mathematics. No, things, uh, no, 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 Vanessa, you are wrong. Our programs, both computer information science and industrial engineering, they are designed in a way that you can come from, from any background that has at least one year of higher mathematics and uh, some science courses. So you will be able to switch from your um, from your background very easy and you will have all the bridge courses that are needed both in computer and information science program and uh, in industrial engineering and systems management program the question is uh, whether uh, you you need to decide whether you are looking for mostly for programming uh, uh, future or you are looking for data analytics future or you are looking for logistics future so you need to decide the what is the best for you and then uh, for both programs you will have the appropriate bridge courses and you will be able to switch from your background uh, yes uh, thanks and uh, my diploma uh, is uh, uh, suitable for that yes 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 sure yes yes thank you and one more question. I don't know if the answer is, if you will have the answer, but if I get a waiver for both the TOEFL exam and the GRE exam, uh, will that in any way affect the chance of getting the scholarship if another applicant has got both the exams uh, taken? Will that affect the scholarship decision? It's difficult to answer this question because uh, we have very limited numbers of uh, scholarship um, scholarships and uh, yes, usually we have to decide and we are looking for the test scores and for background scores. Yes, and yes it is always uh, preferable to take the exam even during the admissions process. Yeah, but for example, for the English exam, uh, as my education was in English, I guess I will get that waiver, right? Yes, then, but this is not automatic. You need to apply for a waiver. And it is preferable that you apply uh, earlier, so that just in case, for any reason, you do not receive it, uh, you have time to take the test. Ah, okay. 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 Thank you. And uh, coming to... Uh, she left. Uh, Vartine had a question in, uh, related to admission, but she seems to have left. Uh, what is the deadline for open courses? This is the question from Nelly Zurabian. Uh, Karine? Open you classes, have? you mean? Um, yeah. yeah, open classes. Uh, if uh, Let me share my screen uh, right now. So, uh, 
uh, if you go to our uh, AOA admissions webpage, then go to admissions, graduate, then visit, read more, open classes, and here you will go to the, since you are interested in the industrial engineering and systems management program, here you will see the list of the courses available. You will need to write an email to us mentioning which course you are interested in and what date. Here are the weekdays when the course is offered, the time period when it starts and ends. And once you get a confirmation from us, you can attend the class. And by the way, um, uh, courses are uh, coming to their end uh, and the last uh, day for the courses or for fall semester will be December 8th. So um, it is, um, if, if you would like to attend the courses, please do it to do the request before that day. And now I will share the uh, email address that you will need to send your email to with a request to attend the class. Uh, just a minute. Okay, here's the email address that you will need uh, to send your email with the class name and the date uh, available, uh, more suitable for you. Any other questions uh, related to admission? And uh, can we also, if the CIS, uh, CIS question and answer is recorded, can I have the access to the video or you don't share it? I saw that yesterday was the was the Q and A for the CIS program. I didn't manage to be in that uh, session. But do you have the recording that you can perhaps share with me? Um, yes, we have the recording, and uh, I will send you after okay. the event. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the chat, I have also shared some important links so that you can also uh, take as a reference or uh, just uh, any other important information that you need to know. Like you admission know deadlines, the application the requirements, tuition fees, and one more request that we have three deadlines, early, regular, and rolling. And we always encourage our applicants to apply either by early or regular admission deadline dates. Do not leave it for the rolling because spaces are limited. And especially if you are uh, going to apply for financial aid, the finance is limited. And if you apply by uh, uh, for if you apply for early or regular admission deadlines, you have better chances to get scholarship. And the early admission deadline is January 31st, and the regular admission deadline is April 15th. Applying by the deadline means that you will need to submit a complete application package and uh, take the test before the deadline. It's not required that we have the scores by the deadline, but important that you take the tests by that date. Thank you. Thank you. Rubina, you're muted. No more questions? No? Okay, then thank you for coming today. Uh, please keep in touch in, in, if, in case if you have questions. Um, have a nice evening. Thank you, you too. Healthy and in peace.
Okay, thank you Goodbye. very much. Goodbye. I ne mira pe yes hartsunem. Ha. Non degree deadline yer pa. Ekten beri mek. Ekten beri mek chi ha. Mhm. Spring admission non degree deadline ekten beri mek. Shat lav yegam shnarakavatsun. Es kavam gnal chi? Ayo. Shnarakavatsun. Shnarakavatsun. Hajovatsun. Hajovatsun.